Will the XRP's max cap of 100 billion tokens be insufficient to facilitate transactions for the global economy? By the way, Ripple was seen moving a substantial amount of XRP to an unknown wallet address in a single transaction yesterday. Not only that, David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, recently addressed concerns surrounding the missing Genesis block on the XRP ledger, citing a similar case with Ethereum. Finally, following Ripple's CEO revelation, will Ripple consider exploring markets outside the U.S. for its potential initial public offering? Stick with me till the end to find out more. If this sounds like something of much interest to you, be sure to check out this new video starting now. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates on XRP and the cryptocurrency world in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we happily send you a special welcome. We invite you to hit on the notification bell so you never miss another video. We are announcing that this channel has a giveaway of 200 XRP. To stand the chance of participating, all you have to do is simply subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment with the hashtag XRP, and the winner will be announced on the 31st of January. In a recent statement on X, Versan Aljara, the founder of Black Swan Capitalist, stated that burning XRP tokens is pointless. Aljara voiced his reservations about XRP incineration amid the asset hitting a noteworthy burn milestone. Recall that last week, we uncovered that tokens burned off the XRP ledger had surpassed 12 million units. Key community figures, such as Panos Mekras, co-founder of Anodos Finance, view this milestone positively, emphasizing that XRP is a deflationary asset. However, the Black Swan Capitalist founder boldly asserted that XRP burns are an unnecessary effort. According to him, XRP's maximum supply cap of 100 billion XRP could be inadequate to support the global economy. Aljara argued that while the idea of burning XRP tokens may seem appealing, it is ultimately unwarranted. He sees the business propositions of firms such as Ripple absorbing XRP's massive supply. In his words, If you think 100 billion XRP is enough to service the global economy, then you still don't understand Ripple's goal. Burning XRP tokens sounds tempting, but it's unnecessary. Furthermore, Aljara contended that when the time comes, there may not be enough XRP to meet the demand, especially considering potential future demand not yet acknowledged by the mainstream. However, Yusef Alreda, founder of Moon Studios, dismissed the idea that Ripple's financial goals could support XRP in the long term. Ripple's his goals, I'm sure. Do those goals include you and me? Alreda asked. He emphasized the role of Burns in creating a scarcity factor and, by extension, propelling the value of XRP. Meanwhile, UK-based crypto enthusiast Jason Douglas attempted to clarify the projected demand for XRP in the financial landscape. Douglas theorized that if XRP captured 2% of the daily trillion dollar volume moved by JP Morgan, it would amount to $200 billion. With the limited supply of only 100 billion XRP tokens, Douglas suggested that the price of XRP would have to reach a significantly high value to accommodate such a scenario. Significantly, the XRPL burn mechanism is to discourage network spam rather than actively reduce XRP supply. Nonetheless, the prevailing voices in the crypto community find burns necessary as it could impact XRP's value. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. Whale Alert data showed that the crypto payments company moved 80 million XRP, equivalent to $45.68 million, to an unlabeled address. According to XRP Skin data, the funds emanated from Ripple's spending wallet labeled Ripple One. The recently transferred tokens are part of the 200 million XRP unlocked from Ripple's escrow accounts. Recall that Ripple unlocked 1 billion XRP on January 1st, 2024. A few hours later, the firm relocked 80% of the total sum 800 million XRP in escrow while the remaining 200 million XRP, 20% of the coins, were moved to the company's spending address. It is worth noting that Ripple first transferred 100 million XRP on January 7th. The payments company has moved another 80 million XRP to the same address. Following the two transfers, Ripple spending wallet Ripple One now holds 46.3 million XRP, worth $26.4 million, as balance. On the other hand, the recipient address now has a balance of 97.8 million XRP, equivalent to $55.8 million. 
Currently, this address has not yet made any transactions since it received the 80 million XRP from Ripple. Furthermore, Schwartz made some latest disclosures while responding to questions raised by community member Metaman regarding the XRP ledger's seemingly unusual start at block 32,569. Metaman voiced skepticism and emphasized the importance of transparency for XRP holders. Tell me, is there any blockchain that lost its Genesis block? The XRP community member asked Schwartz on X. In response, the Ripple CTO drew a parallel to Ethereum's Genesis block ambiguity. He highlighted that Ethereum, despite having transactions predating its official start, does not publicly document them. Schwartz pointed to a specific 2,622 Ethereum transaction on August 3, 2016, moving over $6 million. He questioned, where did that Ethereum come from? Where's the transaction that explains it? An XRP community member referenced transactions showing 40,000 Ethereum transferred during Ethereum's Genesis block. Schwartz acknowledged this, but stressed that the source of those 40,000 Ethereum was not publicly visible due to deliberate decisions in defining Ethereum's Genesis block. Schwartz argued that such decisions, including XRPL's Genesis block starting at ledger 32,569, were arbitrary. He contended that similar choices, like those made in Ethereum's case, aimed to obscure fund sources. When asked if the 40,000 Ethereum tokens just showed up out of thin air, the Ripple CTO emphasized that, from the public blockchain perspective, they did. However, he stressed that Ethereum insiders possess more information on the matter. Nonetheless, in the case of the XRP ledger, being one of the original architects, Schwartz confirmed that the Genesis ledger of the chain had no transactions. However, according to him, the first 32,570 ledgers contained 534 transactions, which are presumably lost now. Before Schwartz's response to Metaman's initial question, Mayuka Vadari, a senior software developer at RippleX, explained the reason behind the loss of Genesis block. She noted that the initial set of XRPL servers experienced uniform configuration and simultaneous memory depletion, leading to ledger issues. This isn't the first time the Genesis block's peculiarity has been questioned. Critics, in the past, raised concerns about the distribution scheme of XRP, suggesting hidden motives behind the absence of earlier ledgers. Schwartz has consistently debunked such notions. An XRP holder asked a similar question in the Bitcoin Stack Exchange Forum in October 2013, a year after the XRP ledger went live. He sought to know the reason behind starting the network at block 32,570. Schwartz responded to this query, noting that a bug affected Ripple servers, causing ledger headers to be lost. Despite efforts to collect data, insufficient information hindered ledger reconstruction. He reassured the users that the missing ledgers, 1 to 32,570, held no significance for average XRPL users. Moreover, in a post from December 2019, Schwartz provided a broader historical perspective, emphasizing the XRP ledger's evolution since its live debut in June 2012. According to him, after the ledger went live, it featured bugs which they had to fix. Schwartz confirmed that, as a result of some of these bugs and reset exercises carried out on the network, data from the XRP ledger's first week, stored in ledgers 1 to 32,570, was lost. However, he assured that they did not recreate the initial 100 billion XRP supply upon the resets. Now to our big question for the day, is the United States very hostile for Ripple's IPO and will Ripple consider exploring markets outside the US? Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings as regards to XRP. This disclosure came while responding to inquiries from a CNBC journalist at the ongoing World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. According to Garlinghouse, the decision to explore alternatives comes as a response to the unyielding legal battle with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Specifically, Garlinghouse disclosed Ripple's consideration of environments with transparent and well-defined rules for crypto companies as potential venues for a public listing. We looked at other jurisdictions that have clear rules of the road, the Ripple executive noted. Meanwhile, Garlinghouse revealed that the firm has temporarily shelved its IPO plans. The Ripple CEO cited the challenging regulatory landscape in the U.S. as a major deterrent. This is despite previous statements indicating Ripple's intention to go public after concluding its legal dispute with the SEC. In Garlinghouse's words, 
In the United States, trying to go public with a very hostile regulator that has to approve your S-1 doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. Furthermore, in backing up his view about the hostile U.S. regulatory climate, Garlinghouse pointed out the irony of the Coinbase case. In particular, he cited that Coinbase had its IPO registration statement approved by the SEC. However, the SEC subsequently filed a lawsuit against Coinbase for actions explicitly outlined in the S-1 filing. As a result, he remarked, why would we want to subject ourselves to an SEC that is openly hostile to this industry? Despite the regulatory uncertainty, USDC stablecoin issuer Circle has filed a confidential submission to IPO in the US. While keeping the IPO option open, Garlinghouse clarified that going public is not an immediate priority for Ripple. He emphasized that many companies choose to go public to raise capital. In contrast, Ripple has no immediate need for capital infusion. On the other hand, he mentioned the company has focused on providing liquidity to its shareholders. Specifically, Ripple's CEO revealed the firm has bought back $1 billion worth of its stock from equity holders. We have investors that first invested in Ripple in 2012. So they've been in this deal for 11 and a half years. And so we want to provide that liquidity, which is one of the reasons why we've done these tender offers, the executive confirmed. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments section. Make sure you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also, you can help enlighten others just like you have been enlightened by sharing this video to as many people as possible. Let's get this news everywhere guys. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content. See you tomorrow to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community.